Hi folks, let's walk through best practices and sort of how I go through importing, in this case, a set of V blocks from GrabCAD into Fusion 360. Welcome to another Fusion Friday. Go to grabcad.com and I'll type in V block. So what I get here is a mix of results. We've got some V blocks. This is kind of what I'm looking for. But then we also get, in this case, stuff like engines and assemblies and random other stuff. So I look through for keywords or buzzwords that I didn't think of. Uh, assemblies, one here. Clamp is actually clamp's the good one. So let's try that. I use what the research results to find better words that I didn't think of to refine it. And now, good. Now I'm getting something that's much, much more focused toward what I want. Then what I do, change your search drop down from recent all time to most downloaded. Now you just need to find one that you like. And I tend to lean towards the more downloaded ones. They tend to have less problems and be more robust. And then I want to make sure, uh, in this case, I like either step file or even better having a SOLIDWORKS, we can import that right into Fusion 360. If you want a particular type, you can actually click drop down out of software and choose things like Fusion 360 or SOLIDWORKS or Libre, etc. Click download files. It'll be a zip file. Save it. Right click, extract all. And in this case, it's giving me a step file, but then there's another zip file that was within the original zip file, which I'll right click extract all and that one has SOLIDWORKS files and this is what I'm going to import because if you take a look I've got these individual files these are SLD PRTs these are individual components it, 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 these are individual components in sort of the Fusion 360 lingo and then the top one the ASM is an assembly file so Fusion the translator can recognize all of that which is awesome so in Fusion I'm actually going to create a new folder Anytime I'm importing multiple files, I usually like to put them in a folder. That way, if it ends up being messy, they're all sort of self-contained and they don't mess up my otherwise orga sort of organized folders. New folder, I'll call this vblock test. Double click it. And now you click upload. And I can go ahead and just drag these, all of the files at once right over here. What's cool is that Fusion will recognize the assembly file as the uh, parent file, if you will. So when I click upload, even though these were these, these were what five or six files, it recognizes the relationship between all of those and it keeps that. And I actually only get one Fusion 360 file with all of those components within it, which is just makes me very happy. It's done uploading. I don't have a preview yet. That's not uncommon. Sometimes, I guess it probably has to render or something in the background, but I can double click it. And now, a couple of really important things. Uh, I say RFI, that stands for really important. First of all, put us in the sculpt environment. I have no idea why it does this. I wish it didn't. Uh, so I'm going to just switch into model. Even though I have all my inches, uh, unit set to inches, it still imports stuff uh, as metric. Switch that over to inches. But most importantly, by far, right now we're in what's called the direct modeling mode. So remember how so often in the Fusion Fridays we talk about this timeline along the bottom of the screen? That doesn't exist right now. So if I do something like click on these two faces and hold hit the delete key on my keyboard, I can delete them. Really cool, really useful. Nothing happened parametrically though. That was an event that I can undo or go back and edit, which I hate. So I want to right click on my assembly parent here and go to capture design history. Interestingly enough though, when you're in the other mode, which is called direct modeling, uh, in other words, or do not capture design history, Fusion needs to fix the, the naming of this because it's confusing uh, with the design history versus parametric and direct. But when you're in that direct modeling mode, so you have no timeline down here, you actually have more power to do things like delete um, you know, delete faces and so forth, which is really cool and useful, but I'm a parametric guy. So we're in design history. Good. We're there. So here's the thing. I don't want this part. I just want the profile. Sure. We could have created it from scratch, but I'm lazy. I just wanted to import this and use this. So we're going to create our own right click new component, NYC CNC V block, go to sketch 
create sketch. I'm going to pick this work plane. I can't pick it, so I'm going to hold down, let my mouse up, and I'll alternate through these options, and it'll be the YZ plane. Reorient myself. So what I'm doing now is I'm sketching on a plane, uh, and I want to transfer the shape of this to that plane, that sketch plane. So I'm going to hit P on my keyboard. That's the same thing as going to sketch, project, project. And see when I hover my mouse over that, it creates a preview of what's going to happen, which is it's going to create that shape on my plane. Click once. I get all these purple lines. I'm going to click OK. I'm done with my project. Now I'm going to hide the other three uh, components that were imported from GrabCat because I don't want those anymore. So to finish this up though, I've got all these purple lines. Purple is the color code for saying that it's projected geometry. That means that it's linked back to this V block that I imported. So if I were to parametrically or direct model make changes to this V block, the sketch is going to update. That's really cool. But in this case, I'm done with this V block. And in fact, I'd like to delete it. But if I click these three components by holding the down control key, select those three, right click, and go to delete, I'm going to make Fusion mad because the sketch warning now says you deleted what I was linked back to. So I get these yellow here, I get yellow here. It's lost its, its source data, for lack of a better word, which is not good modeling habits at all. So I end, undid that. Let's fix this sketch. So I'm going to right click, edit sketch. I'm going to turn off my V block again. I'm going to window select around everything. I'm going to right click. And I'm going to choose break link. That turns it blue. It's now no longer linked back to that original file. That's the good news. The bad news is I can do things like this or this, which I don't want to do. I want this thing locked down. I don't want to have to add a bunch of dimensions, though. I just want to lock it in place right now. Window select and choose fix or unfix. That's going to turn it green. Green means it's locked down as modeled. No need to add dimensions. Now I could click these three originals, delete them, and f stop sketch first, sorry. Click these three original components, right click, delete them. They're all gone. They're no longer part of the model, but I've got my own profile. I could hit E for extrude, click it, drag it out. We're good to go. Hope you enjoyed, folks. Hope you learned something. Again, take a look at GrabCAD. It's really fun, but also learn how to be a good search person. Learning how to use Google, use search parameters, uh, looking at most downloaded and so forth can be a really helpful thing when you're trying to sift through the ever-growing amount of information out there on the internet to find what you need. Take care, folks. See you next Friday.